Trinity Sunday. Fed Talks for Kids. Fed Talk. Fed Talks for Kids! There's only one God, but he is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is called the Trinity. More explanation, please. What's a Trinity? What's a Trinity? That sounds like a big question, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Big questions with a fat number! What is a Trinity? That's a good question. Dr. Schnivenhausen? Yeah, a very good question. The word Trinity means three in one. Try unity. Three in one. This is God. He is one. The one true God. But the Bible talks about God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and in the New Testament, God the Son. So there are three gods? No, the Bible tells us over and over that God is one, but God is made up of three persons. It's sort of like a triangle. A triangle has three sides, yet it is one triangle. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the three sides of God. So God has parts? No, this is where it gets tricky. God the Father isn't a part of God, he's completely God. And God the Son isn't a part of God, he's completely God. The same is true for the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. All three persons are completely God. That makes my head hurt. Yes, it's a puzzler. Maybe a song would help. Oh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are God, all three are one. I hope this song can clear it up. The limits of a human brain will make it tricky to explain how one and three can be the same. But read the Bible and you'll see three persons in the Trinity. Three in one and two and three, three persons in the Trinity. All in one, how could it be? Three persons in the Trinity. So there are three persons within God, and each has a different role in God's rescue plan. Does one of them juggle? No, no juggling in the Godhead. Well, I take that back. I suppose there could be juggling in the Godhead, but it isn't mentioned in the Bible. The Bible teaches that God the Father launches the rescue plan so that we can live with him again. He sends the Holy Spirit to help us do whatever he needs us to do in that plan. God led the Israelites through the desert and gave Moses the strength to stand up to Pharaoh. The Spirit of God filled the judges with power to save Israel from her enemies. When Saul became king, God sent his spirit to help Saul defeat the Philistines. When Saul disobeyed over and over, God took his spirit away. And now, in 1 Samuel, God fills David with his spirit when Samuel anoints him as Israel's next king. Cool. Um, what about God the Son? What does he do? Oh, that's the best part. But we won't get to it until the New Testament. Oh, come on, give me a clue. Well, it has something to do with a blessing for the whole world. The final promise God gave Israel. But I won't say any more. Ooh, I'm starting to connect the dots.